I'm Kerry Fink and have the privilege of being back with you for an edition of Kingdom Living with Glenn Reppel. Hey, Glenn, how are you today? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you, Kerry. I am so excited about what's going on in this series. You know, we had such a good visit uh, in the previous uh, version where we were talking about the three most important events in history. And what a what a provocative question that is, because, you know, when you first asked that question, I started thinking uh, on, on a level that many of us might, well, what events, you know, was it a world war? Was it something positive like landing on the moon? What was it? And you really took us right back. So it, first of all, if you didn't get a chance to see that, I want to make sure to invite you to go to the repelminute.com, the repel minute. Dot com and you'll be able to pull that uh, episode up the three most important events in history but just to get us on the uh, moving in the right direction on today why don't you just take half a moment and kind of refresh us just where we were with those three most important events in history yeah and, and Carrie, this is so important because if we don't get these three events our, our thinking is going to be way, 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 way off because uh, we're just going to be thinking in the, in the now and really not understanding what has gone on all along with eternity. We, we got to stretch our thinking out. So uh, the three greatest events ever, 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 ever is the first one is creation. We got to get that right. Creation creation. God created the heavens and the earth, and he made you and I man in his image. We are spirit beings. We're spirit beings. That's real. Spirit is greater and more real. The unseen is greater than the, than the seen, and it's the unseen that created the scene. So we can't get our head around that because it's, it's spirit. It's spirit. God is spirit and we worship him in spirit and truth. So the first greatest event is creation. And he spoke it. He spoke it into existence. Right. And Jesus is the word that came alive and lived among us. And so he came, but, but first of all, creation. So creation is the first greatest event. And he created man. He created Adam and Eve. And that's our generations came from Adam and Eve. But what happened in the second greatest event is that betrayal happened. A declaration of independence happened where Adam and Eve said, oh, we don't need you, God. We're going to go our own ways. We're going to trust ourselves. We don't need you, Daddy, Papa, the creator of, of the universe and, and, and creator of us. I, I'm going to do my own selfish way and go my own way. And so sin entered in, disobedience entered in, and sickness and disease and death. So the question is, when did sickness and disease and death start? It started there in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. And so consequently, you and I and all the listeners, we are born into the fallen world, the fall of man. That's what we're born into. But the third greatest, so, so let me even say it this way. When was the greatest injustice? When did the greatest injustice happen? It happened at the fall. You and I were born into this unjust situation because because uh, yeah. God never intended, but he gave man the ability to make choice, to choose, to serve God or to serve their own selfish desires. And man, through Adam, our ancestors, our ancestors Adam, chose to follow their own ways rather than the creator's way. And so, so the third greatest event is redemption because God sent his own son in flesh, in flesh. So we, we are made up of three things. Spirit, we're spirit beings made in the image of God, and God is love. So he loved us so much that he sent himself and his son in the flesh to live here on earth uh, to redeem us and to bring back into our stated purpose that his intentions was in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve to redeem us from the fall and bring us back into righteous, the right standing with the Father. 
So he covered over all. He forgave all the sin, the guilt, the shame, all the condemnation so we can walk in victory. So it's not about anything we do. It's about what Adam did that caused the problem. And it's what Jesus did to bring us back into right standing with our father. Now that happened 2000 years ago when Jesus did that. So how can that happen 2000 years ago? Because when heaven, Jesus came to earth, to live here on earth, uh, heaven came to earth and wants to live inside of us. So heaven, so we say uh, uh, the Lord's prayer is, is it's heaven coming to earth living. So the spirit, we can't understand this without the Holy Spirit in us. Our logical brain can't get what happened 2,000 years ago brought us redemption. But when the Holy Spirit, which is God, the divine nature of God living inside of us, he, that, that divine nature reveals Jesus to us and what he did on the cross to bring redemption, to give us victory, to give us the peace and joy. And the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in, in the Holy Spirit. So the, that revelation is so important. When we get that, then we have victory. Now, heaven came to earth to live in man now, not in the sweet by and the by. Now, he lives in us now. And we can have victory. We have victory over death. We are spirit beings that never die. We live forever. And that was the intentional purpose of man was to live forever. We have a soul that's being re, uh, renewed and restored into the likeness of God in, in Christ. And so that's in there. But we have this, this fleshly body that's holding the spirit and the soul. So these are exciting times. We recognize our identity of who we are. You know, everything that you're saying is so important, and it's also such a setup, to be honest, because where we're going in this, we're going to tackle, I love this, I love the fact that we're exploring questions like this, and the things that we're going to talk about in today's, uh, in today's episode are some of the things that you've addressed quite dramatically, and that is about uh, a question that we want to pose and then ask you to answer. Uh, it's also the title of your, of your uh, book, uh, Fraud. Uh, this is a great book, folks. If you haven't had a chance, this is the basis uh, for a real serious understanding. And we're going to talk a lot about that today. You can visit thereppleminute.com, thereppleminute.com, and there's links over so that you can get your copy on Amazon. But what we're going to ask is a question. If somebody came up to you and said, what is the biggest fraud ever committed? And boy, there have been a lot of frauds down through the uh, centuries, and we could, we could sit there uh, just like we could about historical events, but I think, Glenn, you really come at it from a whole different place, and I think that's what's so unique in your coverage of the biggest fraud. Yeah, and see, w w when we think of this, um, I, I, we think of Bertie Madoff. There was a lot of fraud there, money stolen. We, we could think of some of the fraudulent transactions gone in banks. And, and, and yeah, but there's a bigger fraud, a much bigger, bigger, bigger fraud that was committed on all mankind, all mankind. And see, we were never designed to die. Now think about that. We were designed to live with our father with our Father God, to be in communion, in, in, what I mean, commun in friendship with him, in his image, in his likeness, with his character, with his love, his love, his love. And that's hard for us to grasp because we've, we've defined love uh, so many different ways. I, I, you know, I love my chair, I love my car, I love my house. No, God's agape love is so much greater than anything we, could, we can hope or imagine. So, the, 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 the fraud, the fraud here is, is the fraud that was happened in the Garden of Eden when man, man agreed uh, with Satan and said, oh, yeah, I, well, I'm not going to believe this God. I'm going to trust myself. That's got to be better than trusting God. Yeah, you, you, you know, uh, trust him. And, and so God gave man choice. And so Adam chose to go his own selfish way and, that, and to trust the prince of darkness. And the prince of darkness is ignorant. 
And, and, and as, as we remain ignorant uh, about God's ways, we're going to continue to live in darkness. So the greatest fraud was, was, was manifested and happened in the garden. We got to get that and understand. We understand that and we're born into that fraud level. That's when we, we came to earth uh, in a fraud type of state, not being the identity that God had really intended us for us to be. You know, you spent a lot of time in this book, Fraud, where you're, you, you really go back and you address those four, I guess kind of the four key questions. You know, what is the biggest fraud ever? When did it happen? Where did it happen? And who was involved? And when you think about many of the things that you paste across the headlines of the news and all the things that are, are going on from time to time, and we get agitated about them, but many times you, it's very simple to trace back. It is the result of the original fraud. Absolutely. And, and the consequences of that, because, you know, why do we have all these shootings in the street? Why have all the angry, uh, you know, why, why the abortions? And, and so all this traces back, you know, why, why do good people die with sickness and disease and cancer? Well, we got to understand that was never God's intention and, and purpose. Man was designed never to have sickness and disease and to never die. Never. It was to have dominion over the earth is to have, and be in fellowship and union and love, this bond of love with God and man, and to expand his, his kingdom of heaven here in the kingdom of earth to expand and multiply. And with that, use all the resources of heaven to, to, to build the kingdom here. And, and rule and reign and use his constitution, which is his word here on earth. And what we decided is, no, we want a different government. We want the government of man versus the government of God. And that was the mandate that he gave us. And so, so constantly we're suffering because we're being ruled and reigned by man and not really trusting God. And that's the reason we have the issues that we're having in our current economy. And this is why the book, I think, is so important to us right now is is that uh, the greatest injustice happened uh, to, to man when we rebelled and disagreed and said we're not going to because the because the command that God gave is is uh, every tree uh, here here is good to eat is good for you so so the abundance was in the garden but don't eat from this other tree which is selfish desire good and evil. And, and so uh, I've made this abundantly good for you, and you tend it, you work it, you take care of it, and continue to expand my kingdom here on earth. Because heaven is inside of you living, and when, when man, Adam, disobeyed, death entered in, sickness entered in, and so the fraud, we believed the prince of darkness that was fallen already as a fallen angel, and we call him Satan. And we've trusted him and that government more than the government of the kingdom of God. So we're born into that governmental rule, which is continually trusting man and man's opinion. We listen to man's opinion of who we are more than what God has said. And God sees us through the eyes of his son, Jesus Christ, and has given us the Holy Spirit. So yeah, we want to, we want to have the eyes and the ears of God to be able to hear his word that he speaks to us. He communes with us. He talks to us. And so we can't hear if, if, <laughs> if, if all we're hearing is man's uh, 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 word out there and listening to man and, and telling, and man's telling us, this is who you are. Because we hear it in the commercials, we hear it on the TV shows, we read it in the newspaper, we read it in some of the history books. We re and, but no, the, the, his story book is, is his word that has been written. And that's where we find our identity, because the, the word of God, the Bible, is a book on our identity with our Father. And the whole book from Genesis to Revelation is about the kingdom of God. And, and, and us as his sons, as his children, and, and about how much he loves us. 
And you know, one of the things that you pointed out in the last episode, and again, that was, uh, we titled that one, the three most important events in history. And you brought up a very uh, poignant point. You said, you know, that this is really political. It's a decision uh, that's political. And what I was thinking about that, I want to ask you to explain that, but I also want to actually jump ahead and say, you know, the answer is every day is election day because you as an individual, you have an opportunity to make that choice because of what God has provided for us. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, that, that's a good thought. Is, is it every day is it election day? Which government are you going to let rule your life? Are you going to let the spirit of the kingdom of God that only lives in born again people? So that's the other part. Redemption happens when we say, no, I'm going to die to self and I want to surrender to the Lord, the creator of this universe, the Messiah, Jesus, who came to earth to forgive us of all our sins all the way back to Adam. So we got to understand it always goes all the way back to Adam and moves forward to us today. So we're dealing with a lot of time. So heaven went backwards, it went forward, and all of our sins are forgiven going forward. So it's not about behavior. So yeah, that's that's just so, so, so important that we recognize uh, that this is a government decision. We're voting moment by moment, actually, uh, rather just daily, it's moment by moment, who are we going to appoint as king and lord of our lives? And, and inside of that, our decision-making is one, is it going to be the government of man? Is it going to be the idol and government of money? Is it going to be the, the idol of government of our position? Uh, is it going to be our own power? Or is it going to be the dunamis power of God? Because we have the resurrection power of God living inside of us. And see, we've been trained only by the power and the strength of man rather than understand. So as we come and surrender our lives to Christ, we start understanding better that we are spirit beings and the power, the Holy Spirit power, the divine power of God lives inside of us. And so with that, our words are, 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 are life and death. They're powerful. And we can speak life into somebody, or we can speak death and condemnation and sickness and disease. And we see this on the radio. We see it on the TV. And as you and I have talked before, is that the spirit of death has just come into the airwaves so much now uh, with the sickness and disease of this, this COVID and, and, and with it. But we have the spirit of life living inside of us, and greater is he who lives in us. Us than, than, than he that's in this world, the, the darkness of this world. So we have power and authority over that because we never die. Our spirit and soul never dies. It goes with us. And so that's an important part. So we know that identity. It just helps us get through. So the fraud is to believe that we're going to die. <laughs> that is, without Christ, we do not. But we have the Spirit of God, and that Spirit is real. It is real. It is real. It's it's not fake. <laughs> it's not some superficial. It, we have the supernatural power. That's the natural part. God made us to be natural, and that is supernatural, with his power and might living inside of us. And that is love. That's not the power like man has, the authoritarian type of power. This is a loving power. To, to, he came and died to serve mankind, to redeem us. And so inside that, so many times we have man's way is on the top. No, God's way is on the top. And he came down and loved us to redeem us and, 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 and bring us back into that relationship that we have. So one of the things too, Terry, that I, Carrie, that, that I think is really important is, is what was lost? What did we lose? Yeah. What was taken from us in the Garden of Eden? As we look at this day one uh, in, in the book Fraud, is that what was taken from us? And one of the things, th three of the things that, that's in the book in, 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 in day one is we lost our birthright, we lost our identity, and we lost our purpose. And let me just read some of the things that are actually in, in the forward of the book of some of the things. Is that uh, he restored us back into God's image and likeness, our original value. He restored us back. That's what redemption did. In fellowship, sonship, purpose, righteousness, and our destiny in Christ Jesus. He restored us and liberated us and freed mankind from this 
he freed us from the satanic rule of this world of fear. Think about that. Yeah. He, he, he freed us from fear. And, 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 and we know this scripture in Timothy, perfect, or in first John, perfect love casts, gets rid of fear. And we can't get rid of fear. So I want to get rid of fear. I want to get rid of fear. I'm going to, I'm going to get rid of fear. No, it's when we receive God's love through Jesus Christ, and that's revealed to us through the Holy Spirit. Then fear, fear is cast out. Perfect love gets rid of fear. And so, and, and, and so, so, uh, he frees us of, of the cynic rule of this world, sickness, shame, guilt, condemnation, death, sin, lack, lack. We're born into a world of lack, but we have a God of God of all the abundance. He's created. We have a scarcity in mind. We're born into a spirit of this world of unforgiveness, of bitterness, hate, injustice. Uh, and so, so he's restored us back into our original state that we're designed to be into. So that's how much he loves us. See, God is a God of love. He never designed us uh, the way that Adam, because we have choice. And by the way, as, as Carrie said too, we have a choice every day, every moment as to, as to, uh, to vote. How are we going to vote? We're going to vote to follow the Holy Spirit, the divine nature of God living in us. Are we going to vote to follow our own selfish ways. And too often, we know, we do follow our own selfish ways. And how's that work out? Is it producing, is it producing love and joy and peace? Are we living in anxiety and frustration and worry? And we know that all of this causes sickness and disease to our body. We weren't designed, our, we were designed to be fully sanctified and justified and holy as God is holy. That's what he designed us. And as we renew our mind, and our mind and our heart and our emotions align with God's will living inside of us, boy, that, that's the state we really want to live in, in peace. And, and that's the prosperity that he has given us as sons, as sons and daughters of, of the king. And so we are royalty uh, made in God's image. And what a great way to think and receive. So the fraud has been committed when we think our identity is in this world. And that's the only place it is. No, heaven is living inside of us now. And that's why it's so important to expose this fraud and get people to think through it. Because the title of many of the uh, daily uh, REPL Minute uh, messages that you're bringing uh, all begin with this thought of kingdom living. Because once you uh, get away from the fraud and you say, I'm going to claim my true identity, now we're on the path towards kingdom living, which is all what we're talking about. So uh, I want to thank you for sharing this today. And I'm so looking forward to as we continue to dig deeper in all this. So, so, so one of the things, too, that, that I found with those that have uh, read the book and those that have taken and used some of the curriculum is, is in the back of the book, in, in the appendix, are seven pages, are seven pages of just what, what are called IMs. And these IMs, I would write personally, and I would actually record, I'd write them down in my, in, on, on my phone. And in 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 with that ink pad they have in there, and I write them down. Meaning, if if you know, if some somebody spoke something against me or something happened, I needed to refresh my own mind and my own heart. Who am I? Who am I? So I started writing down. Who am I? You know, I'm I'm a son. I'm a son of God. I'm a child of God. I am the righteousness of God. So there's seven pages of just I am. So it's really important that you begin writing down who you are, and what that does is that gets rid of the fraud that is so easy uh, to begin believing, that something was spoken over, your parents may have spoken to you, an aunt or an uncle, a brother or sister, a teacher, somebody may have spoken a lie to you about who you are. No, you've been covered and forgiven by the blood of Jesus, and you're a son or daughter of the King, and he loves you, he loves you, he loves you. He loves you. 
And that's why it's so important as we continue this series that you get a chance to pick up your copy of Fraud. Again, go to uh, therepleminute.com, therepleminute.com, because you'll want to do two things. You'll want to use the links to get your own copy of the book, Fraud. And certainly while you're there, there's also an opportunity for you to click subscribe to, and you will get the uh, Repl Minute delivered daily, Monday through Friday, absolutely free of charge to your own inbox. And just as uh, Glenn, you were saying, you know, one of the reasons that that's so valuable is it reminds you daily that who God has called us to be. And so with that, I want to thank you for taking the time today. Again, we'll look forward to visiting with you next week as we continue Kingdom Living with Glenn Reppel. God bless you.